another rather chilly spring morning. I'm out here on my porch having my coffee and just listening to the birds. There's a lot out this morning. I can actually see it moving when it makes that noise. Oh, there it, there it is. See it? I know you can't. I know. <laughs> it doesn't really work, this tiny little phone. But see it? Hi, sweetie. I wish you'd come a little closer. That little yellow blob up there, that is a goldfinch. And then the other little blob, a little underneath it, that's the chipping sparrow. Can you hear it? Can you hear that? I think that's a chipping sparrow. Yeah, pretty sure. Look, you can see the leaves are starting to come out. It's getting to be spring. Yeah, there's the chipping sparrow up there somewhere. It's so little, I'd never see it from down here. See those little chipping sparrows? See, on the edge of the, the granite there? Here they come. Oh, I wish I could get closer. Oh, aren't they cute? I can hear them. So I'm sitting out here on the grass, trying to call the chipping sparrows to me, which is, of course, not working. So we'll go in and I'll try to draw some instead. Let's check out a field guide, specifically my new Sibley field guide. But first I want to show you my old Sibley field guide. This is the book I used when I wrote my own book, Look Up. And as you can see, the cover came off. I opened and closed it so many times. Now the reason I really love the Sibley guide is that he groups all the birds in whatever family it is together on two pages so you can look at them all. These are all the birds in North America that are in the sparrow family. And some of them even are not technically sparrows. See, we have towies and we have juncos, but most of them are sparrows and they're all pretty closely related. And when they're all on two pages, you can see just how alike they are. You've probably seen some of them some of them have very specific places where they live, like this one lives, you know, in the desert, and this one lives in salt marshes, and this one lives in a swamp, but some of them are much more general. And speaking of the word general, this is another thing I wanted to show you that's easy to see here. We have this word genus, and genus means the birds that are very generally related. These are birds that are all um, you know, in the same family, the same general family. And then when it's a species, that means the kind of bird it specifically is. And we are specifically looking at the chipping sparrow. So then we go here and we see, you know, the chipping sparrow on its own page. And this bird, uh, its range is pretty much the whole country. Sometimes it's only in certain places at certain times of the year. So let's draw one. The chipping sparrow is tiny. It's really one of our smallest birds. It's only about five inches long. I think that's including its tail because sometimes when I see it, I cannot believe how little it is. Sometimes it seems to me that only hummingbirds are smaller. So it's really, it's adorable, it's tiny. It's got this little sparrowy bill. It's just got this little conical bill that all sparrows have. Uh, it's got, you know, kind of shortish wings that it holds over its back. And because it's a sparrow, if you remember all those pictures, most sparrows have a lot of streaks, especially in their wings. And the chipping sparrow, one of its field marks, and a field mark is the things you can see uh, that tell you right off what kind of bird it is. It has these bright white bars on its wings. So we're going to leave some space there to be white. And the thing about a chipping sparrow, its most distinctive field mark is this bright red on its head, the top of its head. It's not like red, red like a cardinal. It's kind of reddish brown, but it really stands out. So I'm going to use orange and brown and red. It's really a pretty, pretty chestnutty color. 
And then the other thing about a chipping sparrow, it's got this dark line running through its eye. Sometimes the bird is, you know, being busy and running around and all you see is that bright red line on its head and then the, the dark, dark line through its eye. It's got a pinkish legs, but it's so busy that sometimes you don't even really see the color of its legs, you know, running around and zipping about. And uh, like most sparrows, it's brown. And we've got brown in its wings, and then it's got some gray under its eye. It's a uh, pretty bright white in its throat, and then it has some, some more gray. So pretend I've colored the whole thing in. Here it is. Look for this bird. Uh, you'll see it in the grass a lot. And the ones I've been seeing have been, you know, pulling out strands of grass to use in their nest because this is their nesting season. Just an adorable little bird you might see in your neighborhood. And that's the noise the chipping sparrow makes. A lot of times you'll hear it before you see it. So this is a very common noise in spring. Keep your eyes open. You'll see this very busy little bird, you know, jumping around everywhere doing its business. So keep your eyes open for it. And thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. The little chipping sparrow by the watering can. Oh, it's got a little stick. Must be making its nest nearby.